Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. Now we're picking back up not too long after the last episode where we, you know, we automated blood and kind of pushed through the basic blood magic progression. And so to get started, let's go ahead and get ourselves the, uh, no, it's the glass, my bad. We'll get that. There's our demon crystallizer. And then for the crucible, Oh yeah, I'm missing the cauldron. And there is our crucible. Now chances are we'll end up making a few more of these as time goes on. Uh, not just for decoration, but also for utility. Uh, but for right now, one of each is going to be perfectly fine for us. Oh, and we get a demon wheel or gauge. Perfect. That will be quite useful to us. Uh, now up at the top left with that in our inventory, you will see a bar. Not important at the moment, but it will be important uh, here shortly. Actually, I know we're going to be using a few more crucibles, but we'll get into that. Um, is there a chunk? I don't see it. Uh, let's go ahead. And actually, one way that we can easily see the chunks. Uh, let's set up our demon crucible. And let's go ahead and just toss in a tartar gem for just a moment here. Just to burn some of that, and that way it shows up there at the top left we have a little bit of regular wheel in that, in this chunk. Got a little bit of wheel. I had to pull out my tartaric gem because it was siphoning off the wheel from the chunk. Um, but if we come out of that chunk, you can see it drops off, so that way we can kind of tell uh, where our chunk is that we're wanting to work in. Just trying to plot out kind of where our chunk boundaries are. So we'll have some rituals here in the back and we're going to have some machines and things set up uh, towards the front there that uh, will basically just be automatically siphoning the wheel that we're burning uh, through these crucibles. Now we can move, of course we can move the wheel to other chunks uh, and we probably will be, but um, for right now we just want to get automated wheel and make it easier for us to craft our nodes before we even start into nodes um, because we're at the point where that is very very feasible for us to go ahead and just do that and get it out of the way and then of course if we need the spice we can come all the way out back here uh, to put some things in okay so let's go ahead uh, let's click through this we're gonna need a few rituals today um, and actually on that note let's go ahead get ourselves a bunch of ritual stones Oh yeah, and this isn't running at the moment, because Zura Med, Zura Air Med, um, 817974, um, this one is the one we want. Okay, he's grabbing stuff. I've got him on these stairs. If, if we have to run it like that, we will. Um, he did deposit into it. Okay, yeah, he's working now, so that's good. Uh, so let me just grab this and basically just get this system back up and running. There we go. He finished a blaze rod. Perfect. And it should be... It should... Because these burn forever. It should get to where it needs to go. Yeah, it's coming up to this side. There we go. Perfect. Now we're back up and running. Um, I don't know. He just seemed to have lost it. It may be because he was trying to deposit to a block uh, that was a bit high for him. And maybe these stairs fix it. He's pretty much just staying here now. Not moving, he's basically just grabbing the bones as he needs to. Okay, because I need uh, I need stone running, basically. Um, but while I'm waiting, let me grab a bit of this. I'm going to have to just smelt this real quick, because I don't have any more stone. And we're going to have to get another star for this spawner, but it's not really a big rush for us. And I'm noticing that if I get too far away, it actually... Because it won't spawn mobs without me nearby. And I'm noticing that it's, uh, it's actually stopping running. So I'm going to have to at least pop over here ever so often. Um, but what we're going to do is, let's go ahead and tab through this. We're going to get the, the resonance of the faceted crystal. We're going to go ahead and grab this ritual and we're going to set this up. As long as it's within this chunk, it should be good. Let's do it like right here. And we're going to need to open this up just a little bit. This one doesn't take a whole lot of ritual stones. Uh, let's go ahead place these out. It should only be 20 runes. Make sure, yeah, see it's starting to smoke. That's not good. Let's grab our weak activation rune. 
uh, or reactivation crystal and we are going to put in a demon crystallizer right here on top uh, this is going to start draining the wheel from this demon crucible but that's fine um, or it will over time and what it's going to do is going to take that wheel that's burned from that demon crucible and it's going to work on growing a uh, like an actual crystal for us let me go ahead and just toss this into there and of course it does cost wheel there's our first one uh, it does cost wheel to grow these but uh, we do come out with a net gain um, with this and then if we automate the collection uh, breaking in the collection of the crystals then what we can do is it's a slow process to build up a stockpile of this but then we can start um, basically just having passive wheel coming in um, but let's go ahead and activate this ritual and then we just kind of have to wait for this crystal cluster to get fully grown at this point but let's go ahead and throw that back in there um, I think first and foremost we're going to go ahead and just get the other wheel crystals going because we might as well um, in case we in case we need them i imagine they're going to come up for the atm star yeah there we go for the spark of knowledge uh do we need this one nope do we need this one nope and do we need this one nope okay now for crack of the fractured crystal we are going to need 44 runes because this is another ritual that we're going to need uh so let's go ahead and let's get ourselves 48 and then, of course, that way we can make the Master Ritual Stone. There we go. Oh, and I actually had some left over. That's fine. We'll use them later. And let's just come up. Um, what's the range? Horizontal radius and vertical radius. Okay. So if we do it right here, this should be fine. And then let's just go ahead and clear this out. I think the, the Master Ritual Stone goes like in the middle of all this mess. Uh, so we're going to need to clear up like two blocks. I'm not going to activate it just yet because I'm not ready to start breaking uh, the blocks and stuff. Oh yeah, we need... There we go. Okay, now we've got all of that placed out. And so once this is fully grown and once we get our crystals actually up and growing, uh, we can activate that and get this this whole process going uh, now this ritual what it's going to do once we activate it it's going to break any crystal clusters that have more than one spire on them uh, which works out because the initial spire is the most expensive additional spires are a lot cheaper uh, i think it's a hundred for the i think it's a full like 100 bar for the first spire and then i think it's like 50 or 40 for the additional spires um, and then, like I said, you get a small net gain on wheel uh, when you then turn around and burn it. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is siphoning the wheel from this into there and just burning it. And then after a while, we'll actually start stockpiling. Uh, we can see that there, we've ran out a bit of the wheel in this, but not, not nearly all of it. Plus we have this other Tartar gem. And then once we start getting some of these demon wheel crystals in, we can make you know additional crystal clusters. Uh, so that's what we're going to be working on doing. Okay, now we did just get our fifth spire on this. Uh, so you can see it's now split off into Vengeful Crystal, Destructive Crystal, uh, Steadfast, and Corrosive uh, with our Faceted Crystal Ritual. And so now we have all the different wheel types kind of present at this point. But now we just need more, just more crystals uh, to kind of speed up this whole process. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put down a chest. We're going to have it setting, say, right here is fine. Uh, for right now, we'll change this up a little bit uh, here shortly. But we're going to put an ender hopper on there just so it can collect the items from the area. Um, and then we're going to activate this ritual. And then we're going to put a lever on there just so that we can shut it off with redstone later. Um, because we may want to shut that off. But right now, what it's going to do is every time a spire grows on a crystal beyond the first spire... Uh, then it's going to break that off and then of course the chest will pick it up and so we can kind of just let this run uh, in the background and hopefully here shortly have quite a bit of wheel built up in this it does take a little while to get the system rolling but once it starts rolling um, and we have a bunch of uh, spires that'll be kind of consuming this wheel and growing 
then that's when it starts getting fast and we start getting a bunch of wheel coming in but with just a single uh crystal cluster it's going to be kind of slow uh okay so now what we're going to do we are going to turn our attention over to nodes and there's a few things that we're going to need we're going to need a node router uh, we're going to need filter parts these are crafted in the alchemy table and then we're also going to need just a bunch of routing nodes because we're going to be turning these into inputs outputs masters all that fun stuff oh and you know what it's not breaking this at the moment um let's do something really really quick i didn't think about that we're gonna have to set the range of this real quick let's go ahead and get our ritual tinkerer um, because what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to set the uh, the area that these rituals are going to handle. So we're going to set here. And it's going to go all the way out to here. Uh, at most 250 blocks. Okay. Let's do... Um, can I go here to here yeah there we go so this is the range that it's going to cover now and you can see it actually just broke one off there and uh yeah we had apparently gotten one of each wheel crystal uh from this so now we've got one of all those inside of the chest all right so we'll let that continue running we of course we need four of each to make a new crystal um how are we doing on oh we are we are completely out of wheel at this point uh let's throw in that um I guess at this point, I really need to go just fill this up. We've got a decent amount. You can see that it's actually draining out the common tartaric a bit faster. That's because we have multiple uh, types of wheel growing in here now. Let's get ourselves uh, first up the node router. It's going to be that. It's going to be that. It's going to be a couple lapis. And that's going to get us our node router. There we go. Um, and then let's go ahead and get some routing nodes crafting. Uh, we're gonna go with like a half stack. It's trying to craft syringe throwing daggers. No, that's not quite what I want. There we go, we'll get that going. It's only five wheel per craft, so it's not too bad. And then for our filter parts, blank slides, stone, and glass. That, we'll get that going. And uh, yeah, let's actually just go ahead and start sending over some of these wheel crystals I think so we can at least get this up and going because I think we might as well okay we got a quest complete we'll just set that up right there um, and that way we can kind of just we can upgrade at our leisure but we don't have to keep managing this uh, so we're just going to go ahead and let it just start smelting up all the uh, the demon wheel that we've generated this whole time but it's going to cook these down and it's going to feed them into the chunk um, and then it's going to just collect and start cycling and then before long we'll actually have a surplus built up but it's going to take a little while since we only have the five crystals we need more crystals but then uh, once we get some more crystals in place that's going to help us out a lot for the master routing node a diamond and imbued slate there we go we'll get that crafting and of course each system is going to need a master routing node now you could have one master routing node and have a thousand inputs and a thousand outputs but if you want separate systems you will need multiple master routing nodes we're going to be setting up multiple today um, and then uh, let's go ahead and upgrade or set up um, we're gonna do I guess 16 inputs 16 outputs for the time being we might use regular routing nodes but it's not super likely at the moment so I'm not going to uh, not gonna bother with making or just leaving some as just default routing nodes at the moment uh, and we did get our filter parts and then for our filter parts um i think most of these at least right now we're going to be going with just standard item filter probably uh, i don't think we're going to be needing the rest of the stuff at least right this second uh so we'll turn probably all 32 of these into standard item filters and then if we need to make more uh, we will uh, so we'll just toss all of that in there and get that crafting up. Okay, it's been a little bit because I was kind of waiting for our system to start building some momentum. Um, because, of course, it is kind of slow to really get wheel kind of up and going. Um, and while I was waiting for that, I just kind of did some work. Uh, I actually came up out of the depths that we've spent the last few episodes in. Uh, and had been working up here just a bit. 
uh, starting to set up the mausoleum. I still got to add a little bit of detail to it, but uh, general shape for the little mausoleum building. Uh, and then, of course, the graves and stuff are going to kind of come off and we're going to have a path that kind of curves here and then carries on. Um, but inside, not done at the moment. Um, but at least we have a proper entrance to uh, where the blood magic area is going to be. And building this, it actually came together extremely fast because uh, the majority of our building materials are related to blood magic. And they're super cheap, just wood or worn stone. Um, for most of it, and then a little bit of nether bricks. But uh, if we come on down, we now kind of have somewhat of the start of our blood magic area. Uh, you can see over here, I just kind of cleaned this up. This is the, um, you know, the little area that we've been working in with our wheel. I did expand out, uh, got a greater tartaric crafted up, and did expand out with four more crystals, uh, though I do think that we are going to bump that up a bit. You can see we've actually got quite a bit of uh, demon wheel crystals at the moment um, and I did go ahead and added a few more demon crucibles which we're going to be utilizing here in just a moment now that we've got some initial momentum we've got some crystals coming in and and all's well with the world uh, now over here I did expand out added a, another alchemy table mostly for decoration and clutter put an incense altar in we're not really going to use it but I went ahead and just crafted one uh, just to get the quest out of the way since I already had the the wooden paths there um, and I've kind of been decorating with plants because to me they look like, you know, uh, like some kind of grave marker or something. Uh, so we're kind of decorating out this mausoleum area with plants and we'll have some plants and skulls and stuff as you come down um, and kind of expand out little sections here. Um, and then if we come across uh, our blood altar kind of cleaned up, we have a few paths that run off here and here, but they don't actually lead anywhere just yet. And I started kind of digging out this space down here a little bit. But what I was mainly needing to get our ramp up and going is a good way for us to farm wheel. Uh, because this, it works, but until you get your ramp going and until we set up some nodes, which we're about to do, and we get more crystals set up, it's just, it's slow. It's very, 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 very slow. Um, especially when we're burning multiple colors through a single demon crucible. And we're relying on this stuff coming in. You know, it takes a little while. Uh, so what I've done over here is I kind of expanded on what we had last episode. Um, and this is why I made the toxic traps. Is I wanted a good wheel farm. Um, just in case. It's not something that we'll necessarily uh, be using forever manually. And we may eventually change it over to be like a mob farm. Uh, but I have two spawners in here. Both of them have been upgraded. Uh, with a variety of fermented spider eyes, gas tears, clocks, sugar, comparators. Um, I also did get a nether star for that, so it does now run while we're away. But we actually have two different levers here, and if we pop down, I left this open just so you could see, uh, but basically the redstone runs up behind that wall there, and there's a lever, and then it comes down, hits the redstone torch, comes over, redstone torch underneath the spawner. Uh, and we have, of course, we had two of these piglin spawners, so we used our last piglin spawner. Uh, for this because I like the piglin drops a lot like a whole lot and wither skeletons in this pack since we're running the rain they're even better uh, if we take a look inside of this chest some of the stuff that I have gotten I have been throwing away a lot of these swords um, but this was because I had filled up on wheel and I was still <laughs> killing things with the sentient sword so we've got a lot of really big demon wheels in here uh, but from those two mobs you'll notice I am getting essences of undeath uh, I'm getting uh, netherite scrap uh, of course we can get all the modium i did get an all the modium psych potion so that's kind of cool uh just to kind of have that drop um off of a mob plus we're getting a literal ton of gold uh, got that that actually came strangely enough you would think it would came from it came from a piglin it did not it came from uh one of the bugs down here that had spawned inside that room um, but you can see a variety of really nice things coming from there plus we now have a way to easily get wither skeleton skulls and we have an easy way to get wither bones for our bobbly heart canisters. So, quite nice. And then, of course, if we pull this... Now, it is worth noting the wither skeletons aren't affected by the poison. So, they're really not as good for wheel. Uh, also, I'm noticing this. I think we're going to have to decrease the spawn range for the wither spawner. Because this one, uh, if you recall, it was from the, uh, the blood magic dungeon. And it seems like it's spawning uh, in a larger radius, so it is spawning mobs outside of 
uh, this spice here. But uh, we can also just kill them with this. And there we go. And you can see it's grabbing all the items. And we're getting lots of coal as well, which is always which is always nice. I'm going to have to clean that up and probably plug it up for some automation. Oh yeah, I was wanting to kill those though for the common Tartarics. But I'll kill these because they're affected by poison. And the best thing to do here, you will see some dying. Um, I think they get... Basically, there's just too many mobs in there. Um, and that's what ends up killing them. And some mobs are going to have uh, some kind of reflect effects. That's why I set up this. Um, it kind of keeps us from getting, I think, poison and stuff. Oh yeah, this is already filled up. I'll just finish them off with that. That's fine. Also, I could just grab all the wheel out of here and probably fill up a Tartaric fairly easily doing that. But uh, yeah, wheel's really not an issue. And so then I've just been taking our common Tartaric. I've been keeping our greater because it kind of, uh, it increases the amount of wheel we get. We get more damage um, with our sentient sword if we uh, use that. But, um, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the next thing that we're going to be doing, which is speeding up the system and making it just a little cleaner and a little better. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's break off this for the time being. And we're going to go ahead and set up the other Demon Crucible setting, thinking right there. And then we are going to be running some nodes. We're going to be running an output. And we're going to have an output on each of these Demon Crucibles. Uh, so we'll put one in right there. We'll put one in right there. 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 And then we're going to have one setting right there. And then let's go ahead and grab our standard item filters. We are going to be setting this up. Uh, this is going to be an allow list. And for this one, for example, we're going to put in corrosive wheel. And corrosive wheel is going to be over on this one. We're going to say it's going to be on the downside. And you can pump in corrosive wheel. And then we're going to do this for the other wheel types. This one's going to be demon wheel. Oh, and actually that one's too hot. Yeah, I need to actually drop these. So let me do that. I think that's why uh, I always forget it's not a two block tall block. And we might actually just put these on the top side for all of them um, because it won't hurt anything. So there we go. All of these are now configured. And then we're just going to put, let's say, a frame chest here. Uh, and we'll put our ender hopper just... Uh, I want to do, yeah, let's do directly on top of it. And we'll just dump all of this into there. And then uh, we're going to put an input routing node in right. Let's actually switch this. Because that way our ender hopper's got a little bit more range sitting there uh, by a block. And we'll have the input routing node be here. And we're just going to set this to a deny list. And we're not going to set anything in the deny list. This makes it just basically accept everything. And we'll put that right there. Uh, so it'll be able to accept everything from this. And then let's go ahead and set up our master node. Uh, this master node, we'll have it setting... Uh, we'll have it setting right here. And this, of course, is going to control the system. And then what we can do is just take that... And connect it. Shift right click. And then we can just connect either the master or the input or any other node that's on the system as long as they do eventually go back to the master, connect back to the master. Uh, that's all that matters. So we're just going to run these and connect them over. And you can see it's dumping the corrosive wheel. Um, unlike the hopper, it can pretty much dump indefinitely. Uh, so it will be sending basically and keeping a stack uh, within each of these. So, And then we're just going to go around and just connect all of these up. And let me go ahead and pull this out. We should need it at this point. And if we look up at the top left, you can see that we have all five wheel types now. And it's going to um, basically keep that going and keep all five wheel types. Um, and you'll notice that it's going to be draining off of each of these. And it should be draining a bit faster. Um, because generally, if you have all five wheel types, um, it's going to drain faster than if you just have, say, raw wheel. Um, because if you just have, say, raw wheel, it's only going to, pretty much every tick, consume one wheel out of the aura. Uh, or not not every tick, but, you know, every, I think it's like two seconds or something like that, that it consumes wheel, you can see up there. So about every two, three seconds, it's going to consume. Uh, but when you have more 
wheel types and you have more crystals, it's going to consume faster and in turn, it's going to create crystals faster. Uh, but it's important that you do have a decent amount of crystals before you get started. When you have multiple crystals, like in this case, we have five uh, raw crystals. You don't want to go for that too quickly um, unless you plan on burning a lot of wheel because it's going to be splitting. You know, each of these crystals needs so much wheel to grow to the next stage. And if you're splitting that across a bunch of crystals, it may take a lot of wheel before you actually get your payoff, um, though your payoff will be larger, you know. Um, because generally it's going to feed all these crystals about equally. Uh, so you do kind of want to balance just a little bit. Uh, and now at this point, let's go ahead. Let's take our greater Tartaric. We've got a bunch of these. Let's go ahead and get like another, say, four crystals going. And we'll just spread that out and we'll get these crafted. And that's going to give us four more raw crystal clusters. Um, and then, of course, now we can just expand this out however we see fit. Uh, eventually we will balance this out. It's just right now I've got more crystal, raw crystal clusters than I do... Uh, you know the others coming in uh, so we'll go ahead and put in say four more of those um, and then of course all of those will be leaching off of the the aura and the chunk as well oh and it did consume you could see it filled our greater tartaric pretty much anytime we craft within this chunk um, it's a little bit dangerous to craft within the chunk when you're first getting started because it will eat the the wheel um, and if you're not looking to farm some that can kind of mess you up but uh, we're kind of at a point now where it's it's getting to be a bit more comfortable as far as our wheel coming in. It's still going to take a while before we build up a stockpile, but we're getting there. So that's what counts. Um, okay, so now at this point, what I would like to do, what we're going to do, we're going to make ourselves nine chests because we're going to have four slates and we're going to have five different types of wheel. This is going to cover the main priorities as far as uh, our blood magic area. We may add some additional things uh, a little bit later, but this will be a good starting point for us. Yeah, we'll have this area be the storage wall. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's, um, we'll start here and this will be kind of where it cuts away out. Yeah. We're going to go there, we're going to go there, because we're going to have to split these up just a little bit. Um, and we'll have a spruce drawer there and there. And then we're going to have drawer, 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 drawer and drawer and I think uh, we should be fine to put the drawer controller here and then we're going to put in a drawer and a drawer and that's the way that our storage will be laid out and then we'll have so you can access this and this is going to be kind of cut away a bit uh, and then this is going to overlook the bottom of the altar and then this bottom is going to kind of break away and you'll be able to see farther down I know it's kind of confusing at the moment but I think it'll make sense once it's done, I hope. Um, and then let's go ahead and get ourselves just a little bit of trim. Actually, we could do the trim here. And then we can cover that, and that should be fine for us. And then we're going to get ourselves four redstone upgrades. Well, we're going to put redstone upgrades in these four. We're not going to put them on these bottom ones, because these aren't going to matter. And not they're not going to need uh, redstone upgrades. And then let's go ahead and just lock this. This is going to be kind of somewhat similar to the way that we automated nodes or uh, automated slates. Um, because this is going to manage our slates and our wheel. This is going to be kind of similar to the way that we managed uh, slates on Sevtech. A little bit different, but still kind of the same basic premise. Uh, so the redstone will come out here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have the redstone come out of this. Like that. And we'll go ahead and slot in our slates. Blank slate. Uh, reinforced, slight, imbued, and then we're going to need demonic, of course. And this way we can upgrade our blood altar uh, to the max tier. I don't want to have to make slights and all that manual. What is this? Ironclad reinforced diamond chest plate of late magic. It is unbreakable. Enchantability is increased by 28. We will definitely hold on to that. Okay, there is our demonic slate. And we'll go ahead and slot that one in. But let's go ahead and slot out our wheel just to go ahead and get this in place. Now what we're going to do, let's pop back behind this again. And we're going to put in our comparators coming off of this. And then our redstone coming out right there. And then we're going to use our analog levers. And just put one down right there, one down right there. Uh, as far as how full we want our slates to be, we are going to say... Uh, what's the storage on this? 16, 32 stacks? Okay. 
Oh, and it actually will not feed into those set up like that. Uh, with the way that we have it laid out. So actually what we'll do, let's just pull this up. Um, let's instead have it just curve off, I think. Like that. Oh. So instead what we'll do is we'll have the lever, like say, just sitting right here. Uh, and then it can run over like that. And then we can turn this up. Uh, let's go with like, say, a 2 to start with. And then we'll we'll bump it up. Actually, let's go with like a 3. Yeah, 3 should be good. And then what we're going to do, let's bring out... Uh, well, let's see. Let's do the... Uh, the shut off first. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our redstone come around uh, to say right here, there, there, and there. And then we're going to put a torch there, torch there, torch there, and torch there. Uh, so of course, once these apply redstone from all four sides, all these torches will be shut off. And then we're just going to run some redstone out right here. And then right here, we're going to have the redstone come out uh, from all of these, basically. And it's going to have a torch setting right here. And then what we'll do is we're just going to set up a chest. None of this is going to be visible. This is all just going to be a big vanilla redstone. We could do something a little bit uh, smaller, more compact with like create. But vanilla redstone, super easy. Uh, and kind of fun to set up. Of course, we did use the analog lever, so maybe that counts. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just put a chest in right here, and this is going to have an input routing node setting right there. And what we are going to do is we are going to configure this one to take stone. Uh, it's going to be allow. We're not going to limit it or anything like that because it doesn't actually matter to us. Um, and we're going to just drop this in. Priority doesn't matter here. Um, and then let's go ahead, grab that connection. And we're just going to plug it up to this node network that's over here. That's fine. And we're not going to plug this one up just yet, but we are going to plug up another one. Uh, it's going to be our output routing node. And we're going to go ahead and just grab that connection. And we are going to set up another filter going to be just stone is allowed and we're going to drop that right into there and then we're going to just plug it up to the same node network system that's over here do we want to give it a limit yeah might as well uh, let's go ahead select stone and we're just going to say uh, 128 does that keep it does it does okay that's been fixed uh, you know, we had to, on uh, ATM6, we had to delete and then basically put an extra number and then delete it there at the end to get it to save, but looks like it does save. And then this one's still uh, configured. That's great. Okay, now let's add one more node for right now. We're going to be doing some more of them here in just a moment, but uh, one more node to get this, this, this half of it kind of up and rolling. We're going to put a node right here. It's going to be an input, and it is going to be told that it can allow stone, just as much stone as it wants to. Grab that. Uh, so if we pop over, we should see that we have two stacks of stone. Once we plug it up, we should have two stacks of stone, that is. Yeah, there we go. You can see stone has went into here, but nothing beyond two stacks of stone will go in here. Uh, I mean, I can manually put it in there, but uh, you know the system won't send it over. Nodes are how we're going to be accessing our storage network doing a lot of control with it and then we'll, we'll sprinkle in some Batania uh, corporea as well just to give it some nice nifty features also but I debated about setting this up with corporea and having it manage uh, and keep things stock but we can do it really really easily with nodes so we're just going to do it uh, at this point and go ahead and get slates up and running all right and the purpose of this of course is whenever this redstone torch whenever this does not have a redstone signal uh, you know, basically we have, what, uh, what are we doing, three? We have three out of 15 comparator strength um, of each slate, then it's going to shut off. 
well, it'll be three. Over here, it'll be uh, demonic slates. It'll be a little bit less, right? And blank slates, for that matter, uh, will be a little bit less as well. We are not that worried about it. This is going to give us a few stacks of uh, slates basically being kept stock inside of this. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now we can actually read how much slates are being made. Um, now what we're going to do is manage when it pulls out, what it pulls out um, in order to control the system. So we are going to have some output routing nodes for this. And we're going to be using some drawer controller slates um, and some trim also for that matter. Uh, we're going to put in a drawer controller slave here and a drawer console and a drawer controller slave right here and then we're going to have to run out some trim and get this to plug up basically uh, so what we'll do is we'll just run this over like this because the redstone will still go over that just fine and then we're just going to run this back. So that way it actually, you know, it plugs up to the system. Um, and then we're going to have ourselves a couple output routing nodes. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And we are going to configure, let me grab a few slates. Basically one of each type. And we're going to be configuring some filters. The first one we did was blank slates. So let's go ahead and just do right click that put in blank slates and also at this point you could one thing you can do and something you might consider depending on your setup is you could limit how many slates are being fed in uh, but the reason we're not going to do that we're putting a threshold for it to stop that's lower than like a 14 or 15 and we're going to let it just input whatever it does because if you do if you do limit how many slates can go into this what can potentially happen is your slates may they may get stuck because they don't have a place to go and we don't want our slates to get stuck. We don't want them to get stuck inside of this without a home because then it's going to mess up our system uh, because we need our slates being sent somewhere. So we're going to drop in the standard item filter uh, with the blank slates right there. And then we've got the imbued and it's important that all these match up to what's over here. I'm going to double check, make sure that's right, but I think I did them all in order. so. Uh, yeah, okay. And let me just go ahead and dump all that into there. And then let's go ahead and grab all of these nodes. Um, and it's important that you don't run these through each other at this point. Uh, and the reason being, if these get a redstone signal, uh, it'll stop transferring signal through this node. So for example, if this one got redstone signal and it was attached to this one, and this one was attached to this one, and this one was attached to this one, and they didn't go anywhere else, uh, what would happen is whenever this one got a redstone signal, none of these others would be able to work. So it's important that we don't run these through each other. Also, this input routing node does not need to be ran through uh, those others either. Uh, now at this point, we're going to make ourselves a master routing node. Let me go ahead and make one of each of these. Since we've got enough in here. And that way we've got a few more crystals running. And it'll actually finish up, uh, I think, the last of our wheel quests. So, our will related quests. And we'll just go ahead and set these up. And that gives us a few more crystals. Okay, so our master routing node, this one's going to manage basically the blood altar and stuff. We're going to put it right here. We're going to grab that connection. We're going to plug it up there. And to this one. This one this one and by the way originally i was planning on of course this episode being a world upload patron uh patron world upload so i think what we'll do is we'll postpone it for one episode and the reason being because i want you guys to have all the blood magic setup stuff and i think we'll be getting the rest of it in place come next episode um, we'll just kind of get these two things we'll just kind of get the altar and the wheel set up and rolling this episode and then we're going to do a bit more node related type setups like this come next episode that way we have all of our systems that we've automated thus far uh, we have those integrated and you guys have access to those so we will postpone it for like one episode okay so our outputs are plugged up and our stone input is now plugged up now what we're going to do is let's uh let's see input we're going to set up an input routing node right here this one is going to be able to accept let's see we've got an input 
four outputs, all filter, that's perfect. Uh, so this one, we're actually going to have it be anything. We're just going to leave it as just an allow list. Uh, we're going to set it to a black list. That means that it'll allow anything. It's denying nothing. Uh, so we'll just put that into there. And we'll go ahead, plug that up. Now you'll notice that the, uh, the Master Blood Orb doesn't get pulled out. Uh, that's because it doesn't have a place to go at the moment. But we will be giving it a place to go here in just a moment. Um, now what we're going to do is let's put... Uh, we're going to set up a frame chest. This frame chest is going to set... Uh, we'll have it set right here, in fact. And we're going to put something into that frame chest. Um, but we're going to make it so that it's visible just so that we can look and say, Okay, you know, the blood orb is in here. Uh, you know, our system's running something. And we're going to put both an input node and an output node on this and we're going to grab our blood orb uh, this is going to be the allow list we're going to put in the master blood orb uh, so anything that falls under the master blood orb should go into there and we'll just drop that right into there uh, and actually let me I should have done two of these you can set up multiples at once but like we did with stone a minute ago and I should have done that because I'm, I'm basically dealing with a lot of the same things uh, at the moment. Uh, so now if we were to plug up the output node, you'll notice that our master blood orb gets pulled into here. Um, and the reason being is because we don't have any kind of redstone control to this. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to run out a little redstone line that runs like this. And it's going to come out... And go right down here we're going to go ahead and just put a repeater no delay on that and of course this is going to be looking and seeing when that torch goes off uh, which is going to tell it that there's plenty of slates running uh, that have ran so don't do anything else you know don't be uh, don't be running any more stone and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a redstone torch right here uh, and you'll notice at this point uh, if we put the master blood orb thing into there you'll notice that the blood orb does not get pulled out uh, even though this is all plugged up if it has redstone it shuts that off uh, but then as soon as we remove the redstone for example we do this that master blood orb gets pulled in okay we're going to be using this to basically just toggle our system for us and actually now i tell you what we're going to switch the the nodes here we're going to do the input on this side because uh, this will work better for us and that way we can just run our redstone right here like so um, and then that whenever this has a redstone signal it's going to turn this off uh, which of course basically says hey we've got all the slates we need and then the input will be able to then pull the master blood orb out the output will be plugged up to this line uh, and then the output is where we're going to want the double torch stock because uh, we're going to be alternating this. So we'll do it just like that. So this will plug in and power off. And whenever the redstone comes here, it powers this off, uh, which of course allows the output routing node to go, which is what pulls the master blood orb out. Perfect. And everything's cleaned back up. Um, so if we throw this back in here, it should immediately get pulled right back out. There we go. And it gets dumped into the chest. Okay. So now we know when the blood orb needs to come out. Um, and so then at this point, uh, let's see. I think everything else over here is plugged up. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our output routing node right here. This one is going to be one of the this one right here that's filtered with the stone and uh, yeah this one's allowing anything perfect and actually since we're gonna have these on the same channel let's go ahead and take this out just really really quick and we're going to add smooth stone to the deny list so you can pull out anything but don't pull out smooth stone the reason being this one's gonna be on the same line it's going to be allowing smooth stone we don't want that to cycle um, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, oh and 
let's also go ahead and set this to only allow 16 at a time. So we'll dump that into there and then we'll link that up and you can see it just dumped 16 smooth stone into here. We give it a second that's going to start turning into a blank slate. As soon as it gets turned into a blank slate since there is space right now for the blank slate to go it'll get pulled out uh, but then of course as soon as the blank slates are filled and this has gotten a redstone signal coming through then this is going to stop working. So here we go. There's the blank slate. It got pulled out. More stone came in. Um, and you can see that this will just be keeping this stocked with stone. There's two stocks there. I'm going to go ahead and just throw that in there too. Uh, now what I'd like to do, let's go ahead and set up one last little thing. And that's when it needs to cycle the node back in, or the, the master blood orb back in. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say this side, master blood orb. And all we have to do for this, super easy, we're just going to run this over. We might actually need a routing node here. Yeah, link distance is greater than 16 blocks. Um, though really, the only time it would need to run is when this doesn't have redstone. So we can actually, uh, since this is only going to run when this one is active, uh, we can just plug it up like that um, because of course whenever this gets redstone it will shut off this but it won't need to run in that situation either so and then we can just plug this up over to here so that's going to tell it that once it can it can move the master blood orb back over to there and then we can always look in here and say okay here's our master blood orb if we're looking for it because it might be something if this might be crafting and i might want to use this for something and so i want to have access to that um, even though I should probably just make another one so that we've got one on us because um, I do use it for crafting a little bit but all right now if we take a look what's our redstone power coming out of here still a one what are we at almost two stacks and now another thing that I would like to do is let's take and let's set up an input node a little tricky to actually place though without placing it out in this space I guess I could put it underneath it so we'll do it right there and we're going to go ahead and set up a filter here and we're going to say this filter it allows corrosive wheel demon wheel destructive wheel steadfast and vengeful it allows all the different wheel types and then what we're going to do is we're going to set a filter here that says uh 128. okay let's do 128 and then this one, 128. This one, 128. And you see where this is going, I imagine. We're going to be checking for basically two stacks of any of these. Beyond two stacks, if there's two stacks in the chest, that also means that there's a bit, you know, stored inside these demon crucibles, a variable amount between like one and 16. Then this input node will be able to run. And since we're putting it on the input instead of the output, it's going to check the target inventory and only extract beyond that point. Uh, so if there is more than 128 of any given wheel type in this chest, then it can pull that wheel out. And we're just going to grab that and we're going to plug it up to here. And with the way this is set up, we're going to need to add a filter to this because we don't have any like just open depositor with the way this system is configured so what we're going to do is we're going to have an input node that sets maybe back here on one of these slaves uh, it'll have to be on the far side or no it'll have to go on the underside for this so let's just pop down we're going to put an not an input an output routing node right here and this one is going to have the filter saying all the different wheel types and then we'll just plug that up like so okay so now whenever this gets over a certain point you can see the wheel is not getting pulled out at the moment once it gets over a certain point then it will be able to send the excess over to these drawers uh, and then come next episode we're going to be setting up a that's mainly what we're going to be focusing on next episode is pulling things from this automation and other automations um, and then storing it into our big storage network and kind of bringing everything together 
So that's the plan, including stone, because it looks like I don't have any more stone in the system. I'm going to have to go add some more. That's fine. Uh, we do have a power of two. Oh, yeah, I need a repeater for this. Almost forgot. Let me grab four repeaters. And what we're going to do is have those repeaters come out to boost the signal. So once this can send the signal through, it'll come through and shut that off. Now, since this has a signal, uh, we've got four stacks at the moment. When this one finishes up crafting, we should see that it doesn't go anywhere now. And it waits until it makes the next tier. There we go. It's going to start crafting that. And then we'll start stockpiling up to like three stacks or whatever of reinforced slates and then imbued slates and then demonic slates. So um, even though we may have some issues, no, I don't, I don't know that we're going to have any issues. I know demonic slates are kind of costly for us right now. Once we bump up to a tier five, that shouldn't be an issue. But right now they are a little bit, uh, a little bit on the costly side for us. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and then let's go ahead and set up a repeater there, repeater there. Actually, repeater here doesn't really even... We don't have to do that. That's just a waste. Because as long as there's a power of one coming through here, it's going to hit that torch. Uh, we really just need repeaters on these far sides because they do have a distance they have to travel. So there we go. Yeah, you can see we got reinforced slates. They were pulled out automatically, dumped into here. Our Master Blood Orb still hanging out. Now we don't have to make slates ever again. And I think I already got the hopper from down here, but let me double check. Make sure that we went ahead and pulled that off. No, we did not. We'll go ahead and pull that off because we will not be needing that. Oh, it just pulled those out. More come in. Oh, I love it. I love it. But there we go. Just like in Sevtech, we pretty much automated it just with vanilla redstone and blood magic. Uh, just with the power of nodes because they are extremely powerful they're honestly they're better as far as logistics goes in this version than they were back on Sevtech. you know there's been some big changes to blood magic nodes of course we did lose uh, fluid transfer which i imagine is probably something that we'll see re-added at some point um, it was a little bit buggy before but it was usable uh, but i do suspect that we'll probably see that come back maybe uh, at a later time because fluid is kind of important with blood magic if you're using uh, you know, like fluid transfer for your blood altars. So, but anyways, I know it's wrapping up point for this episode. Like I said, we're going to postpone the patron upload for just one episode. That way you guys have something a little bit more complete. Um, since we are at the point of nodes, I want to get everything kind of plugged up and cohesive for you guys. And so we'll postpone it for just like one episode. Um, and then we'll wrap up with a bit of node fun, um, and bringing everything together come next episode. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.